All right, welcome back. So the second obvious question here is, what is a hacker? Now, because web security and hacking go hand in hand, so a hacker is somebody who tries to use something in a way that it was not intended. So hacking is as simple as uh, using, let's say you have a remote control for your TV, and then you figure out a way to use the same remote control to operate another appliance. So that simple act is hacking because that's not what it was intended to be used for. Now, when it comes to computers, obviously these hackers are people who try to break into computer systems or websites. In our case, because we are uh, focused on web security, so we're going to focus on those types of hackers and not the ones that break into hardware systems per se. But you may be surprised to learn that hacking doesn't is not all about computers. Hacking may start in the real world, okay? So it may start in the real world. So, but before we go to this, let's look at the types of hackers that exist. Now, everybody knows this. There's two types of hackers. There's the black hat and white hat hackers. So obviously the white ones are the good guys and the black ones are the bad guys. So white hat hackers are those people that hack computer systems to just to, to find the problems that are there and then notify the owners that these are the problems they found and they're not really trying to exploit uh, those systems. They're actually people who are paid to do such things. So a company will get some white hat hackers and then tell them to try and hack their system. And if they succeed, uh, they fix the problem. If they don't, they know that their system is secure, but either way, the hackers are paid. So, now, the black side of things, the black hat hackers, are those that try to exploit the system. So they'll find a problem in a system, and then instead of telling the owners, they're going to keep that information to themselves, and then they keep that computer for later use. So they may steal the processing uh, power from your computer, they, therefore your computer stops uh, functioning normal, or they can use your computer to send uh, spam emails to other people because they don't want to do it themselves. So a black hat hacker can do so much uh, damage to your system if they take over. They may not do something right away, but they'll keep your computer as what is called a botnet. Uh, so they have many computers that they can control when they want to actually launch an attack on maybe a company or something like that. So these people are, these are the people we want to prevent from taking over our website or computer system, right? So let's look at the types of black hat hackers because they are white. We don't really need to worry about white hat hackers because uh, those are the good guys. And sometimes they lead to new innovations and all that. But let's look at the black ones because these are the more interesting and the ones that we should have uh, that we should be careful about. So the first type of hackers are those just curious users. So let's say, for example, you have a, you have a website where you are giving away, uh, or you have a website with a URL like this. Maybe there's a website, let's say website.com. And then there's a profile here. It says profile is equal to, uh, or maybe slash profile like this. And then it says ID, and then it says 20, something like this. So if you look at this URL, you can clearly see this is the website name, this is the page that you're on, but then there's an ID of 20 here. So you may start thinking, okay, uh, if this is 20, what happens when I put 21, something like that. So you end up finding a different profile here, and then you keep going and say, okay, let me go to uh, maybe 200. And then from this, you can get information and say, okay, there are 200 profiles on this page. Uh, and then you've moved through all the IDs one by one without having to know their names, having to know any more details. So this can just be a curious user 
but they may end up finding information that was supposed to be secret. So you could have a website where you are selling a PDF, for example, and then somebody finds a way to beat your system just to get a free download of that uh, PDF. So those are what we classify as just curious users. So those are the things you should uh, put. These are the people you should worry about and put uh, security measures to avoid such things. And then we have these uh, script kiddies. So script kiddies are those types of hackers that don't really know how to write their own software, but they just get scripts from the internet and then they give it a try. So those are very uh, low level hackers. Uh, low level as in they don't know much about hacking. They can't really make their own programs. They just rely on getting scripts. They don't even understand how those scripts work. They just want results and to play around with websites. So those guys are not really much to worry about because usually the scripts they get are of very well known security flaws in uh, web websites. So by the time they get those scripts, it means those problems have actually been fixed. So usually those scripts may not work unless you have a website where you have completely not done any website security. Then things like SQL injection, those are very common things and script kiddies will try and figure those things out. So these two you can worry about. And then there are these guys that are thrill seekers. These guys just want to see what happens. They're just really interested in uh, playing for fun. You know, they just do it because they want to see if they are able to actually hack into a system. Now, you may not need to worry about these guys uh, so much because these guys usually go for the big fish. They want to see how far they can actually go. So if you're running a small website and you don't really pose a threat to them because it doesn't really feel it's not really a thrill to try and hack your small website because they know they can actually do it if they wanted to. So these guys usually go for the big fish. Hacktivists, hacktivists these are politically uh, motivated people that want to hack uh, big organizations or state-owned things. For example, they want to go for the FBI or the CIA or things like that. So you don't really need to worry about these guys. Then there are those that are trophy hunters as well. These guys go for the big fish because they want to earn a trophy and say, the fact that I got this means I actually hacked into this system. So this group right here, you may not need to worry about so much, except the script kiddies and the curious users, but also you need to worry about the professionals. Because professionals are those people who hack for money, for profit. So they may get your computer just to use as a botnet. So they keep your computer uh, hacked with a backdoor in there so that they can use it when they need to, uh, when they need to hack somebody else that has maybe, maybe a bank or something like that. So they can use your computer in that process. Now, these professionals can range from just very uh, low skill, hackers to very advanced and the best of the best. So this is the area that you need to worry about more. So those are the types of hackers and hacking scenarios we're going to be looking at. So we're going to look at all the methods or some of the methods, some of the common methods these guys use in order to hack your system. So we're not going to go deep into how to actually do the hacks, but how to tr prevent this kind of system. So if somebody, this kind of hacking, if somebody tried to hack you as a just a curious user, what measures do you put in place to make sure uh, you limit that? Same thing with script kiddies and so on. Okay, so I will see you in the next video where we talk about uh, the first thing which is social engineering.